Uh, morning, guys. Okay, so this week we are doing our first introduction to analytical writing, um, and we're doing so by getting to learn a little bit more about Lester Lloyd um, with uh, this tattoo project. Okay, so you guys have matched um, the source material for my tattoos with the images or attempted to do so, some with probably varying degrees of success. Now what I'm looking for you guys to do is to pick one of those pieces of source material, material whether a song, essay, chapter from a book, um, whatever it is, and provide an analysis for it. Okay, so this is a different kind of writing, all right? And and this is, but this is really the core of all kinds of writing. I know that some of you might be sitting at home asking, when will I need this? And the answer is probably, you know, every day of your life. Because what we're doing here is, is we are writing, okay? We are writing in order to uh, convey to our audience that what we hold in our mind is true, okay? It's something that we do on a daily basis. Okay, we're just practicing it with literature because this is a, a good mind puzzle. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the examples that I provided on how to do this. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to come and see me during my office hours. Okay, so um, I start off here. Um, the introduction, okay, the first thing that you should do in any of your introductions is you need to provide the name of the author and the text and suggest what you think about this. Okay, this is um, what we will probably be calling our thesis statement, more or less. Okay, but since we're just writing one paragraph, it's right at the front because you want to let your audience know right out of the gate what it is you believe. Okay, so I'm using the poem Do Not Go Gentle um, by Dylan Thomas as my example. All right, so um, to start this off, in the poem Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night by Dylan Thomas, comma, the poet depicts humanity's never-ending struggle with our own mortality. Okay, so right off the get-go here, okay, and feel free to just copy and paste this right into the start of your own essay and plug in your poem, song, essay, and your author, whatever they be, whether it's Kurt Vonnegut, Albert Camus, uh, Langston Hughes, um, D uh, Bob Dylan, um, who actually took his stage name Dylan from this author, Dylan Thomas, feel free, free to plug it right into there, okay? This comma is necessary. We're going to talk more about grammar on Thursday. Ooh, grammar. Thursday and Monday, uh, respectively. Okay. All right. And then this is what I think this poem's about. Okay. You don't need to go into a great deal of detail. Just give me a really short okay, snippet. What is, what, is this, um, what is this author trying to convey? All right. And for this, I, the humanities never had any struggle with their own mortality. Okay. For the second sentence, all right. And feel free. If you feel like you've got writing down, you're a pro writer. Go for it, okay? But if you're still kind of going through the stages, follow these steps, okay? You're going to go into greater detail supporting this analysis. So you're going to tell me a little bit more about the piece that you chose. Okay, so example. Thomas conveys this struggle with his villanelle by providing a procession of individuals, one who is wise, one who is good, one who is wild, and one who is grave, all struggling to hold on to life until the last moment. All right, so I didn't really tell you anything i'm just i'm just giving you a little bit more information about this poem in case you've never written it read, uh, read it which many of you probably haven't that ultimately goes to support this idea okay so this is kind of like the context what do i need to know about this piece of writing in order to understand the interpretation that you came up with third okay you are going to provide a quote okay and this goes to every kind of writing speaking Anytime you're using language, you need to use evidence to support your interpretations, okay? So I'm going to expect that you pick a quote that supports the idea of your interpretation in this first stanza. So if we go back to it, and there's different ways of introducing this, in the final stanza, comma, Thomas turns to his own father. Um, I use a colon, um, quote, and you, my father, there on that sad height, Ooh, I, I put a, I, I doubled that up. Mr. Lloyd did a boo-boo. And you, my father, there on that sad height, curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. All right. So again, this is, I just found the quote that I think ultimately supports the idea that I put in this first sentence the best. Okay. So you're looking for a piece of evidence that supports why you think that this poem, song, essay, um, speech means what it means. All right. Um, just a small note here, guys. Um, the 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 uh, the slashes um, are intended to put there. That's for stanza breaks. So if you're writing using a poem, that's how you show that it's a different stanza without just doing a new line every time. All right. Sentence four. 
provide analysis to the quote explaining why it supports your original interpretation. Okay, so now you're you're just putting the quote in your third sentence. Now you're telling me what does that quote mean? What does that quote mean? All right, and how does it again? Everything comes back to this, and this is why this is our thesis. Why does it support this interpretation? Okay, so if we look at the um, my own analysis, I put. In this final quote, the audience sees Thomas struggling with his own mortality, ultimately by facing the mortality of his father. All right. Okay. Um, I actually don't need that comma there. And I actually don't need this ultimately here. All right. That's just being more wordy than I need to be. Struggling with his own mortality by facing the mortality of his own father. Okay. Um, and so that's, and, and that's, I think, a very common thing throughout humanity to do. All right. Now, this last sentence can be tricky. All right. And every last sentence of writing that you're going to do is hard. It is a difficult thing to do. OK, so what I want you to do for this one is I want you to think about. All right. You obviously I gave you a choice. I gave you a choice between eight things and you might have picked the shortest. OK, and that's fine. If that's what you did, that's fine. Don't sweat it. OK, but OK, you picked it. OK, so it must mean something and, and they all mean something to me. So I'm going to tell you guys, I didn't give you guys any poems or essays that are, are light on thought. You can you can you can apply this to your life because I have. I know I have. All right. So think about how it is that this poem can help you live a better life. All right. And for me, and, and I picked Dylan Thomas because this is going to be my next tattoo. OK, um, Thomas's poem brings front and center a thought many of us attempt to hide deep within our own psyche. But by embracing the poem's raw emotional power, a reader may be better equipped to handle the inevitable loss of those they love. Okay. And so this, this is something for me. And, and many of you may or may not know this. I lost my father um, only, almost a year ago, um, a year ago at the end of this month. All right. And this is a poem that has brought, brought me great comfort because it has forced me to kind of deal with mortality and death. This thing that all of us will have to deal with, and some of you probably already have, this, this poem has helped me to process those emotions and those feelings and those ideas. All right. So that's how I want you guys to ultimately do this. Okay. Um, this is not an easy thing to do. All right. Um, and it, But here's the thing that I really want to convey to you. If you've made it this far in this YouTube video, I appreciate you. Okay. But if you're able to master this, if you're able to get really good at this skill, I am giving you a superpower. I am giving you the, the ability to take the thoughts that are in your brain and put them into somebody else's brain. Crazy. That is a superpower. If I was doing it by means other than language, you would think that I was a mutant or I would be the next member of the Avengers. Okay. But I'm not. All right. Okay. This is something that you can all do if you practice and work at. All right. I like all you guys a lot. I can't wait to see you in class today. Catch you on the flip side.